Um, so many things to talk about with the holdovers. Congratulations on all of the awards as well. You guys are having a brilliant season already, which is a thrill to see. Um, Alexander, I'll start with you. It's pretty rare for you to commission a script, right, rather than write one yourself. So can you tell us about why that worked on the holdovers and how you collaborated with well, David Hemmings? Yeah, I had David Hemmings in the screenwriter. I had had the idea for the film for many years but hadn't done anything with it. Because I hadn't, I personally had not had the life experience of those boarding schools in New England, uh, and then the gods sent me a TV pilot, a screenplay for a TV pilot written by David Hemmingson that was set in a in a boarding school. So I called him up and, as you say, commissioned a screenplay. I said, I don't want to do your pilot, but would you? write something for me <laughs> and he said yes and then it was my first experience let's say directing a writer oh. you know he proposed two three four different s story trajectories and I chose one and then we kind of went back and forth a lot when he was writing it what did that look like when you say you went back and forth tell us about that process well he would write something and I would criticize it <laughs> <laughs> And then I would rewrite it and give it back to him, and so it went. And then, but uh, the good part is that we wound up with a screenplay quite personal to us both, oh. and I'm very grateful to it. That's very special. Yeah. These these characters are all sort of united by their loneliness. So tell us why that was a particular theme that you were interested in exploring. <laughs> it just came with the territory. You think about people stuck at a stuck somewhere over Christmas break, automatically there's a patina of loneliness and melancholy, and then just make a comedy out of that. Okay. Um, <coughs> Divine, when you're filming some of those beautiful and incredibly emotional scenes, <coughs> what sort of keeps you going? Because I think that, that there's been a lot of conversation about how you peel back. In each scene, we see a little bit more of you. How do you make sure you don't spend it all at once? These guys. Yeah. Uh, no, really. I, um, Paul has been my predominant scene partner. Um, and really working with Alexander of tonally, I feel like they're right. It was like a constant dial that we were constantly adjusting of like, eh, a little more, that's too much. Um, which was, uh, I was heavily reliant upon them because it's a very specific sweet spot and it's a lot of hope and faith and guesswork and I mean with skill but do you know what I mean you're relying on we're relying on y'all's humanity to connect and to receive it and this would be amazing if we did this as a play yeah, yeah. Oh, play. make we, a good musical I think it should be a musical <laughs> oh, right yeah 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 something about smelling like fish I could have an aria about that yeah yeah but so yeah no I, I relied heavily on them, I did my work, and you know, in regards to the um, creating this uh, layered, complicated character. But in regards to those nuances, it definitely was these two guys. Mm. Well, on, on top of the script that you were given, and on top of the the notes that you got, what kind of background did you create for Mary? What kind of life had you imagined for her? Um, a purposeful one, mm. a simplistic but driven one. Mm -hmm. One in which she's learned how to execute life with just enough effort, not too much, so that she can give all of her effort to her child. Uh, so that's why I think it's beautiful when you see someone who, where they feel like some of their purpose is gone, what that then leaves them with. Um, and then too, you know, by being one of the few females in this movie, uh, femininity and uh, you know what it means to be a woman, I wanted to show as many different shades and nuances that a woman could be, uh, because I felt a little bit of a responsibility um, that y'all needed and wanted to see that. Um, so like certain things and how she talks and there's like a and how she cleans up real good at the party. Yeah, yeah. We were we were we were very specific on that, on her look and how. I remember when we were beginning to create the character in regards to her physical look, and we had a meeting with hair and makeup, 
and I never forget, it was during the holidays, and so I wasn't all glammed up like this. <laughs> um, and I just so happened to have about, I'm gonna say 10, 10 strands of gray hair that goes right here. Uh, and you really can't see it unless you're close. And Alexander was like, what's that gray right there? And I was like, mortified. I was like, oh my God. And he was like, no, 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 I love it. Let's keep it. That's Mary. Her son's there. He's there. Yeah. That stripes there. Life. It's life. Yeah. And so all those kind of nuances just help make the character feel very full. I love that. Um, Paul, your obviously your second collaboration with Alexander. So what is it about his characters and the world that he creates that makes you want to inhabit it? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> okay, here we go. Um, well, you know, <clears throat> it's incredibly warm and intimate. And it's very, very, it's close. It feels very kind of uh, intimate. I, I say this all the time, and I'm going to say it again, and I drive you crazy when I say it. He doesn't use a monitor, which is where everybody sort of sits over by a monitor, the producers and all these people, and they drink their, you know, chococino over by the monitor. <laughs> and everybody else is over there doing this grunt work over there, you know, all the guys with the lights and the boom guys and all that stuff. That's all gone on his set. There's one place where everybody works together and everybody's working in the same job and there's no hierarchy and there's none of that crap. There's just one place where everybody is together having a lovely time. And it's, I've never experienced anything like it and I don't think I ever will again. And so I was dying to do that again. Because you go off and yes, it's all the Chocachinos and everybody's sitting there looking at the monitor and going, his hair looks strange, does his hair look weird? Like that, you know, and, and thinking they're doing something and they're not. Mm. And, and the work all happens in one place and it's fantastic. It's a simple thing, but it's huge. And he stands by the camera and he speaks to you mm. sometimes from off camera. <laughs> well, he does. Well, and he does. sits and you know he's there and you feel a human being is watching you. You're not being watched by a piece of machinery. You're being watched by human beings running the machinery, who are using it as a tool to watch you. And he's sitting there with them. And that's huge. It's a completely different My response experience. is that's how most films were made. Yeah, at one this, time. This whole monitor business is new in, in human history and cinema history. Yeah, yeah. Casablanca, no monitor. No monitor. <laughs> that's right. Bicycle thieves, no, no monitor. monitor. Um, I want to talk about the, the physicality the of... The Dam Busters? No, no mind. I'm thinking of good English film, man. <laughs> oh, it's an English film, anyway. Um, oh, Paul, I want to ask about Hunnam's kind of unappealing characteristics, mm -hmm. because we can, we can smell him mm -hmm. from oh, our good. seat. Oh, good. You can? Excellent. We absolutely can. Excellent. We can, we can feel his smell o vision palms. Yeah, okay. <laughs> so how did that sort of... All of those descriptors, how did that afford you an insight into his physicality and how he would hold himself and how he yeah. would be around other people? Well, all of those things were wonderful. I mean, I've dreamed long and hard of playing a man who has trimethylmenorrhea. <laughs> um, <coughs> hyperhidrosis and things like that. <laughs> They're wonderful things. I mean, I, it, they, they put him further and further outside a zone of acceptability. You know, they make him further and further a misfit. You know, and so he's, he tries to put more and more armor on to cover it up. He's got a real shtick going, this guy. And it's safe feeling and it's fantastically reassuring to him. And he's got his intelligence that he can hide behind and amuse himself with and to nobody else really, but he's super amused by himself. And, and all of these things make him feel like he fits into this place and he kind of doesn't really. And he wants desperately to connect. He doesn't even know how badly he wants to connect. And he certainly doesn't know how to. So all of that stuff. I will also say, you were talking about the hair and makeup people and how great it was. And <coughs> they said to me, as much as you can, please don't bathe. They said that? Yep. And I said, <laughs> yep. Yep. And that's what I did for you in this <laughs> All of you, I didn't bathe very much. That's why we but it does give you a bit of a tactile sense of the man. <laughs> and so, so that, yeah, they did. They said, <laughs> as much as you can. They said it to Dom, too. Don't, don't. So y'all were just smelling like shit around No, we weren't smelling like shit. You didn't notice me smelling like know. shit, did you? You never noticed me smelling like Whoa. shit. No, as much, not all the time, not bathing. Just occasionally, just let it go so that it'll look a little bit more. 
a little bit more, a little bit more, a little bit more tacky, <laughs> a little bit more fish belly white. You know what I mean? Yeah. Who said that, Sarah? No, Michael, oh, Michael, uh, Michael, White, Michael White, the hair guy, the hair guy. Be greasy. He was like, Be get greasy. greasy. I'm gonna have to send him Listen. an email. <laughs> Telling him what a good job he did. I don't know about that. <laughs> um, Alexander, with the film just kind of set, kind of set in the middle of arguably the greatest period of musical history. That's mm. when the Ooh. best musical, mm. I think, anyway. How do you... Beethoven and Brahms may argue, but... <laughs> I did say arguably. But <coughs> you're kind of like a kid in a sweet shop, surely. How do you decide, how do you land on the right music? Because there is so much wonderful choice. Thank you. It was a long process, <clears throat> really stretching the entire length of post of editing on the mm. film, and involved myself, obviously, Kevin Tent, the editor, who has a very good musical sense but we have also uh, a third member of that musical triumvirate, uh, a music editor who's been working with Kevin and me for 25 years, ever since election, wow. named Richard Ford, born in London, actually. And uh, it's just a constant process of trial and error. Yeah. And then when we get everything just perfect, then we're told what we can afford. <laughs> <laughs> and then we have to <clears throat> scramble to switch out cues. <laughs> What are you especially proud of getting in there that you could afford? Cat Stevens was uh, expensive. That was our big ticket item. Yeah. And I tried to replace him because it was too expensive and plus I feared being cliche or inviting too many comparisons to Harold and Maude or something. Mm -hmm. But it just worked so well mm -hmm. for that, yeah. that love scene. That's kind of the love scene between the man and the boy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> when, he watches him ice skate, and it just works so nicely. Yeah. I love an ice skating scene. It's like the bishop's wife. Anything can happen. Wow, the bishop's yeah, wife. That's awesome. nice, right? Yeah, that's Good really call. cool. Yeah. yeah. It's is, that a kind of, is that a place of romance for you, an ice rink? No. <laughs> <laughs> but, but it's funny what you have to do with music. For example, at the beginning, there's the choir sing... Um, a little town of Bethlehem, and then we switch to a tune called Silver Joy, which is that kind of melancholy singer-songwriter piece. And then the Chambers Brothers, come, no, then Beethoven, mm -hmm. the, the Emperor Concerto, and then the Chambers Brothers is what the boys are listening to in the, yeah, in the, dorm, room. In the dorm. But suddenly the credits stop during the time in the dorm. Why? Because if I had had credits over the Chambers Brothers, they would have charged $30,000 really? more. Really? Really? <laughs> wow. Because it would have been considered a credit sequence. Wow. Then, and they, they jack up the price for opening or end credits. Wow. Yeah, yeah don't tell the Chambers Thanks. Brothers. <laughs> <laughs> little, little them. Davine, I'm obsessed with the level of detail that you brought to this film because you mm. play a cook and you cooked. Yeah. That seems so unusual. Tell me about that technique. Why did that work for you, for Mary? Um, we, we were talking in our first conversation, Alexander and I, um, and I think we got on a, a topic of <coughs> food, maybe, and he said he liked to cook, and I was like, here I go, I'm gonna <laughs> dive in, let's see if he bites, and I was like, so, I think she should cook, for real, for real, and I like to cook. And he like perked up at the idea and he was like, sure, I'll talk to props, we'll figure it out, we'll get real things. He even asked me, what do I think the Christmas menu would consist of? Mm. We figured that out together. Um, and it was amazing. At that time, I don't know if you guys have it yet, but there's a new Julia Childs uh, series. Mm. Oh. Julia. And the, yeah, Julia, and mm -hmm. so uh, the... Oh, was that special a thing at the food, time? Uh -huh. Yeah, the special oh, cool. food props people for that show came and did. Yeah, they did period food. They made did period our show. appropriate Based food. in Boston, because yeah. that yeah. show had right. shot yeah. in Boston. Yeah. 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 Um, and so, well, I just, I don't know. I, from reading it, it felt just very, on the page, everything felt very intimate and magnetized. Does that make sense? Like, mm -hmm. and reading it, every single, like, there clearly is four cups. It needed to be that it was a white lid, a black one. When I read the script, it was so 
specific that I was like, if I come in here being like, burr, 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 yeah. like <laughs> it's gonna throw it off. Yeah. So I was like, please, can I really chop? Can I, you know, do those things? Because I think it would have stuck out like a sore thumb, otherwise. Uh. Uh. Um, and, and so yeah, I think for all of us, yeah. little yeah. little details. All the detail of it was amazing. It it would show up. Yeah. Some project you can be a part of, I won't name names, oh. and you can't. <laughs> I hate you. <laughs> or you can hide behind the, you know. Yeah. And no one will ever know. And I knew from reading the script, I was like, everything that this character is supposed to be doing, I gotta learn how to do this. Which also, I think, I don't know about you, but as an actor, that's really, that's part of the fun yeah, for me. Yeah, it is part of the fun. Yeah. To, yeah. To pick up a new thing. Yeah, like what are their skills and traits yeah. and stuff? For sure, for sure. And let me learn it in yes. three months. Yep. Paul, yeah. <laughs> Paul have you ever three fenced weeks. on stage? I fenced on stage, yeah, believe it or not. Yes, I have. Because in your training, you still probably learn fencing. We had to fencing. do it at, did you have to do it at Yale? We both yeah. went to the same on drama school. On guard. We both had to, <laughs> we both went to the same drama school. They still do it, the fencing? You do yeah, it. and yeah. now that I know, I want to duel you. Oh, that's going to be good. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Uh, and the, the levels of production design, Paul, tell us, is there anything on the set, because I know that the detail was phenomenal. Yes. Is there anything that is just sort of added to the character of Paul that yes. you maybe hadn't thought of? I thought that his vice, this guy's crack, yeah. were cheap mystery novels were right. crappy mystery novels so those are all around you can't see them but they're in the they're in his room they're all around him because that's what you know he's he wants to shut off and he just sits and yeah. reads kind of cheesy mystery novels and stuff like that but the set the set dressing and the design and everything was fantastically complete you felt that you would go you could turn anywhere and there was something mm. that kept you in it that you could touch and feel yeah. and you could absorb all the time and also the the locations you know, we're in this, we were, we're in an old, sets. no, we were, no, no sets in this old, like, convent where we shot the, the stuff when we were watching oh, the, yeah. newlywed the newlywed game, newlywed when we're game. watching TV, like the wood, the weird old fading wood and stuff and everything. The, the radiator, the radiator, the radiators would on. bang and the, you know, the so clanking. So turn them off. Yeah, but it's. And be in the cold. Yeah, well. That sounds good. Cold for comedy. You know? <laughs> yeah. But, it, but they would make all this, I mean, everything was tactile, ding, it was all ding. there. You know, you felt it. You can absorb it. Yeah. It's great. Y'all are both looking at me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> wow. Well, uh, if I think off the top of my head, it would be my second grade teacher. Her name was Miss Greena Walk, and she was deaf. And so in preparation for our second grade, in first grade, the school began to teach us sign language. Uh, and they had certain technology <coughs> that they would give us to incorporate at home so we'd be ready when we had our class, when she taught us that year. And I think the biggest thing I learned from her is that your differences empower you and that you could never truly come from a place of lack if you're open and willing to try. Um, and I think, you know, I, I went to prep schools all the way through, but what do they call them? Like, I was a day. Uh huh, day student. A day uh -huh. student. Uh -huh. But being that my mom's a teacher and mm -hmm. education was so important, I went to these schools. But in these schools, I was bused there. So I was living in inner city Philadelphia, being bused to these affluent suburbs. So I always felt othered. And so she always made sure to incorporate me and make me feel seen. And that uh, she just, even at second grade, which I think speaks to how amazing she was, that I remember this. She let me know that I was different, but that it was okay and that it was beyond my color. And that like she was different. She just let me know that it's gonna be an interesting road for you. But if you find out who you are and you commit to that and are kind and love others, the universe, karma, will always take care of you and, and make sure you are safe and good. So that's something that I've just tried to live by always. What did your mother teach? My mother taught uh, K through five, uh -huh. 
but kindergarten was her sweet spot. <clears throat> mm-hmm. um, and I just thought it was, it's a very special grade because so much <clears throat> happens uh, in that year. And my mom just really went above and beyond. And you know, like, I don't know, in America, we have this thing called like hooked on phonics. So it's like my mom wanted to make sure that everyone leaving from kindergarten was like a but like their reading skill set was above and beyond. It was very important to her, um, and also at that age, it's probably one of the more personal years than normal. And I remember um, clothes that we no longer wore, food my mother would you know provide for the students or make because uh, again she, we were teaching in the inner city, uh, making sure that they were provided for and taken care of. So yeah, that was always. Teaching has always been something close to me. And I'm really sorry, we are going to have to wrap it there, but thank you so much for coming along. Thank you to our wonderful <laughs> panel. Thank you. Thank, you. Thank, you. thank you so much, Alexandra. Thank you. Thank you so much.